Well, many thanks for your call, Dave. 08704202020 is our number. Emails coming in thick and fast via talksport.net. Uh, text us 81089 if your comments say who you are, where you are. It will cost you 50 pence plus your normal network rate. I'm Duncan Barks in London, and George Galloway is doing his show tonight from South Lebanon. Let's go to uh, Victor, who's in London. Victor, you're through to George. Good evening. Good evening to you, George. A couple of statements you made that I can't quite fathom out. Yesterday you said that the Israelis killed Yasser Arafat. I don't ever see that documented anywhere, that he was killed by the Israelis. And the second point I make about that, you're talking about the Palestinians, how poor and how they're scraping for a living and everything. Is it not true that Yasser Arafat, when he died, had millions and millions of pounds spread all over the world, and his wife was pictured in Paris buying designer clothes, or maybe that I have got it all wrong, or was that not true? Well, thanks, Victor. Uh, as a matter of fact, it, it isn't true. It uh, isn't Yasser true. Arafat didn't... So everybody in the world money. got it all oh. wrong. Uh, Victor, you asked the question, so let me answer it. Yes, but Yasser yes. Arafat didn't leave any money at all. Yasser Arafat owned nothing except the uniform on his back. Yasser Arafat spent most of his life living amidst the rubble of Israeli aggression. The first time I met him was in Beirut in 1977 amidst the rubble of Fakani in downtown Beirut. And the last time I saw him alive was amidst the rubble of Ramallah where Israel had besieged him in the presidency for many long months, breaking his health, and then, and I come to your first point, in my belief, uh, murdering him by poison. Now, I was at the hospital in Paris uh, where President Arafat died. Uh, it is completely unexplained, the medical condition that he suddenly developed, and many people believe, I'm surprised that you are surprised by it, many people believe that Israel murdered Arafat because he would not agree to the surrender terms that the Israeli government demanded of him. But whether you agree with me or not, I invite you and other friends of Israel to ponder this. You had in Yasser Arafat a man of almost infinite flexibility, a man so moderate that it ought to have been possible to reach a comprehensive settlement with uh, and that no such man will ever come along again. I warned the Friends of Israel over and over again in Parliament and elsewhere, do the deal with Arafat, because after Arafat comes people much more extreme and hard to deal with than him. But they didn't believe me. They wouldn't deal with Arafat. Even when he signed the Oslo Agreement, they still wouldn't give him what they promised on the documents of the Oslo Agreement. Then they besieged him, then they killed him. That's what I said last night. I say it again tonight. They besieged him. They stripped him of all power. They forbade him to move outside his compound for many, many months. And then they killed him. But whether you agree they killed him or not, they politically killed him when they made it impossible to implement the Oslo Agreement. And now you get Hamas. And now they complain, you see. The same people who besieged Arafat and who refused to deal with Arafat then complain that the Palestinians elected Hamas after his death. Well, you should have done the deal with Arafat. That's all I can say on that. Oh, 08704202020 is the number. Text us 81089. It'll cost you 50 pence plus your normal network rate. Email via talksport.net. It's George Galloway live from Lebanon all the way through until 10 on Talksport 1089, 1053 a.m. across the UK on digital radio and across Edinburgh, Fife and the Lothians on Talk 107. And we've got some breaking news coming in that a state of emergency has been called in Florida because of a uh, hurricane threat. We'll update you on that at 9 o'clock. Uh, back to the calls. Let's go to Damien, who's in Southampton. And Damien, you're through to George. Good evening, George. Hi, Damien. Hi. I'm going to be very brief. Okay, uh, mate. Okay. Um, as far as I can see, Israel is going around in intellectual circles. They're, they need to make this fo the following realisation. There is only one way for a country to ensure national security. And that way is by maintaining excellent diplomatic relations with other countries and states. And that's it, George. That's all I've got to say, really. Um, right, Israel, so, Israel's I mean, the, the, mentality. The, the, uh, I appreciate that, Damon. And this is the point that I was trying to make uh, to Nicole, who will now become famous as the uh, uh, Englishwoman who uh, insists that she's an Israeli. Uh, I did make the point that she didn't sound very Middle Eastern, and she was living in England. But as uh, 
the Jewish caller from Manchester pointed out, uh, she has the right to go and live in Palestine, whilst Palestinians don't have the right to go and live in Palestine. I did make this point implicitly. I now make it uh, explicitly that, uh, uh, that military superiority has kept Israel as the top dog in this region for a long time, but that era is now drawing to a close. And Israel would be well advised to make a comprehensive settlement with its neighbors who promise normalization and recognition in return. And unless they do so, we're going back to war. And be sure about it, that war, these wars, will not be the pushovers of 1967 and other occasions. The Hezbollah proved in the 34-day war here the Arabs and Muslims are no longer things to be killed, things that can be rolled over, things that can be occupied endlessly. Now the balance is beginning to change, and Israel would be well advised, and I think wiser counsel in Israel, though sadly not its supporters on this phone-in show, uh, are beginning themselves to realize that. Thanks, Damien. Lots of texts and emails coming in, George. Uh, a couple of, well, a number of which are uh, actually questioning your motives for doing this show live uh, from Lebanon this weekend, including Chris in Glasgow, who says, what a waste of money sending George to Beirut. Uh, perhaps it's just that Galloway is a publicity-seeking junkie and Beirut is but his latest fix. In, in the interest of, of fair and balanced broadcasting, we ought to put that forward and get your reply. I'm not sure it's worthy of a, of a reply. I'm, I'm walking around here amidst unexploded bombs, trying to bring to the listeners of TalkSport, and quite a few of them seem to be lining up to listen, mm. Duncan, uh, what uh, lies behind a conflict which transfixed the nation, indeed all nations, over 34 days. It was the biggest story over those 34 days in the world, and the Middle East remains the biggest international problem that we have. And it's now infecting, as we now know, from problems that we have with sections of our own population. It's now affecting our own security in our own streets. You can text us at 1089. Uh, you can email us via talksport.net. 08704 2020 is the phone in number. It is George Galloway in South Lebanon. I'm Duncan Barks in London. It is Talksport 1089, 1053 AM across the UK on digital radio. And of course, across Edinburgh, Fife and the Lothians on Talk 107. I will take the news update at nine shortly. But George, you mentioned at the beginning of this hour how on your journey today you spotted 20 destroyed bridges. Uh, we do know that, uh, looking at the news wires, that French soldiers have arrived. Uh, to help the Lebanese army rebuilding bridges that were destroyed or damaged by Israeli airstrikes during the 34-day 30 uh, fighting. I mean, how long is it going to take? I mean, this is, I know this is, there's not one simple answer to this, but I mean, the reconstruction of, of the country and the various cities, I mean, this is going to go on forever, isn't it? Yes, and uh, you may well ask, Duncan, uh, why we should pay for it, uh, because the European Union didn't destroy the bridges. It was Israel that destroyed the bridges with weapons given to it free, by the United States of America. I make that point because we've already wasted hundreds of millions of euros of European Union money, which includes British taxpayers' money, in building things in the occupied Palestinian territories, which Israel then destroys uh, without uh, a care in the world. Now, the French uh, uh, forces that are here, and I did see quite a few French TV crews today gearing up for the landing of the French soldiers that you refer to are spending European Union money here. These, uh, these um, European Union soldiers from Italy and from France are going to be spending our taxes here. Now, I'm glad that they're doing it, but you may well ask uh, whether uh, the United States and Israel that destroyed these bridges in the first place shouldn't be footing the bill for the reconstruction. More calls after nine tonight. 08704202020 is the phone in number. We've got calls in London.